Something I love about salvinia is that it's highly invasive. You can convert your, your fish waste into chicken eggs. Look at all this beautiful salvinia minima. It would be a shame if someone came here and threw it all away. Luke, why are we throwing away the salvinia minima? I thought this was good for your tank. I thought this was a good thing. Well, salvinia actually is a very good thing for a pond system if used correctly. Now, the main purpose of the salvinia in my system is to one, reduce the amount of water that actually gets sunlight because when too much of the water gets sunlight without plant growth, sometimes you can potentially get an algae bloom. Um, and I would prefer not to have algae blooms just so I can see my fish a little more clearly. But the second, and honestly the main reason I have the salvinia is for nitrate reduction and ammonium reduction. This absorbs ammonium, it, re it absorbs nitrate that the fish produce. Look at these little fish, gotcha, gotcha buddy. This is our little Scrat. You see Scrat here is a massive, hey, hey, chill. This guy's a motorboat. Whoa, look at the power. Look at the speed, but yeah, when Scrat poops, he produces a lot of ammonia, which also turns into nitrate because of our filters. And the main reason I have all these plants here is to convert that into plant matter. You see, a lot of people think that plants remove nitrates, plants remove ammonia. They don't necessarily remove it, they just convert it into protein. That's right, you can eat your salvinia to become jacked. No, but plants actually convert nitrogen-containing compounds into protein. And you know what happens if that plant dies? all that protein begins to rot and returns into your water system. So you definitely don't want plants rotting because that basically defeats the entire purpose of them. But Luke, these plants look healthy. Why would you remove these if they look healthy? Well, when you remove salvinia, like these floating plants, it creates less density. And with less density, you actually get more salvinia growth. So in a sense, Instead of doing water changes, I do plant changes. Instead of removing large volumes of water out of the system, I just remove the ammonia and nitrate in plant form once it grows too much. And then after I remove it, it simply reabsorbs, it grows back. Something I love about salvinia is that it's highly invasive. Now Luke, why would you love a highly invasive plant well, it's because it's highly invasive and grows extremely quickly that it's such an effective waste absorber. You see, every like two to five days, the salvinia in your tank, under like ideal conditions, can double its biomass. All right, do you guys understand how crazy that is? In a couple days, doubling your biomass? That basically means if you had like 10 pounds of salvinia, in a couple days, that would become 20 pounds. And in a couple more days, under ideal conditions, that would become 40 pounds. And in a couple days, under ideal conditions, that would become 80 pounds. So you could seriously, you know, if you had the area to do it, you could grow a lot of this. So that's why also you gotta be careful. You don't want this going into like public waterways. Probably illegal, highly invasive. You don't want that, <laughs> um, but it's a lot easier to simply remove this and throw it in your compost than it is to do a massive volume water change. And both of those achieve a very similar thing. Think of it, why do you do water changes? The main reason, the main reason most aquarium owners do water changes is to reduce that pesky nitrate level. It really is to reduce that pesky nitrate level because you can have all the filtration in the world, you can have the big mega canister filter that blasts three million gallons per hour. But guess what it's not gonna do? That's all you know, anaerobic bacteria, or that's all aerobic bacteria. It's not gonna really legitimately reduce the nitrate level. In the end, you gotta do water changes to reduce that. Or you can absorb the nitrates from the system with plant growth. Now you can also use an anaerobic filter, but honestly, 
In my opinion, anaerobic filters don't really work. They're not practical for an aquarium-like setup because, because of a lot of factors. It's complicated, but plants are a much more effective way. So instead of having to do massive, massive water changes, you could theoretically just absorb those nitrates out of the system, and that is your method of nitrate removal. Now, of course, there are other benefits of water changes like mineral you know, replenishment, um, you know, potentially reducing buildup of pheromones and other things in the water. But the main important reason that us aquarium fish people do water changes is for that nitrate level. That's the, that's the key method. Now, a big downside of salvinia, you can't see your fish. Luckily, I have different sections here, some with fish, some without. I actually grow a majority of the salvinia in the sections that don't have fish. Now, in some of the sections that have fish, I do grow it as well but not too much because it actually will reduce the amount of oxygen exchange with the surface. Because the salvinia covers the surface of the water, you're gonna have less oxygen from the air being able to exchange in the water. So in the areas that you have actual fish that require oxygen, if you have a massive overgrowth of it, which in a couple of days you might, um, you don't want that. And look at Balthazar's tank over here. Oh my gosh, Balthazar, we can't even see the dude. Balthazar, honey, have you been overtaken with the salvinia? I'm sorry, buddy. Where are you? Can anyone spot Balthazar? Oh, Bal. Little Balthazar. Don't come out swinging now. My gosh, it exploded in this tank. That's crazy. Hey, I'm sorry I covered you with salvinia. I'm sorry your entire tank got overgrown in salvinia. I hope you didn't mind. <laughs> but look at Bowser. Bowser's been probably eating his salvinia more, and he's been eating his water lettuce a little bit. Bowser. Ah, uh, there he is. Here's big old Bowser. So yeah, Bowser... Bowser doesn't let the salvinia really take hold in his tank. He just eats it before it gets the chance. <laughs> Look at that. There's like little duckweed in here, but not much salvinia at all. So that means he must have eaten it. Balthazar, on the other hand, I guess doesn't like it. So yeah, if used correctly, salvinia can be a great way to reduce the need for water changes in your aquatic system. You just want to be careful that, one, you don't release it into the wild because this stuff is highly invasive. That's what makes it such a great waste absorber because it just grows like crazy and takes over everything. And two, you do want to frequently remove it um, because if you don't frequently remove it, it'll actually just overcrowd the entire area and its growth will actually slow down and then you won't even get the benefit of it. I feel like a lot of people in their head, they know plants are like, oh, they're good. They absorb waste, but they forget that if a plant stops growing, it stops absorbing. If a plant stops growing, it stops absorbing the waste. So if the plant gets overcrowded, reduce the numbers, call it down a little bit, and then more can grow and more waste can be absorbed. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, I know you have the burning question. I already, I already can foresee the future of the comments. Luke, Luke, why don't you sell it? Why don't you sell the salvia instead of just throwing it away? Well, well, I will. I actually do plan on selling the salvinia. I just have to figure out an economical way to ship it because salvinia is not like an expensive plant. So, you know, I, I wouldn't want to sell it for more than like 20, like $25 at the max. Um, you know, ideally I'd like to sell it for less. Um, I'd like to sell it for as cheap as possible as it's worth it for me to take the time to actually package it up. Also, can we take a minute to appreciate just how beautiful these goldfish are? And just how wonderful they look in this greenhouse? This is just beautiful. Gotcha, boy! Okay, now we have five gallons of salvinia. Oh boy, Woo! That's got some weight to it. Now we're gonna do something very cool with the salvinia. This is gonna surprise you. Quick mid-roll in the middle of our vlog here. 
If you guys didn't know, we got Mr. Cow plushies available for sale. And we actually have autographed versions as well. So we got Aaron over here. He's going to be packing the orders today. And I'm just going to be signing a couple of these because we actually had a triple pack, a triple autographed pack. So I got to sign three of these. So we okay, we are in the chicken coop now. And almost all of our chickens are laying now, I think. And you can see like some of them have dedicated spots here where they want to where they want to lay their eggs. So look at Barbara just sitting here waiting for another chicken to be done. And look what's underneath her. Look what's underneath her, another egg. But the reason we're here, we got Aaron here. Oh no, we have an escapee. We have an escapee. Listen up, escapee. Look at this dude. Yeah, these, uh, I don't know which ones these are. Whether they're the, the Australorps or the Jersey Giants, I don't know, but those guys are skittish. Those guys are skittish, but we're here to feed them the Salvinia. Okay. We got all this extra Salvinia and we got a bunch of hungry foliage chickens. Oi. All right, guys, who wants some of this? Who wants some good, good fish protein? Okay. Now we're dumping all this Salvinia out. Wow, that's a lot. So this actually is my first time feeding them this Salvinia, but I did some research on it. Turns out it is a safe thing to feed chickens along with duckweed. So if you have an aquatic system and you have an overabundance of protein being you know, absorbed out of it from the floating plants and you got some chickens, you can basically convert. You can convert your, your fish waste into chicken eggs. Because the protein from here are going to make the eggs... Why are you pecking me? The protein from here is going to be converted into, into eggs, basically. Pretty cool, sustainable system. Look at that dude go. You good little Balthazar. Hey, Bowser. You want a shrimp treat, Bowser? It's yummy. Oh, gay. Can chill out. Wow, look at this dude. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna give some shrimp treats to Scrat as well because of, of how brave he was. Come here. Come here, buddy. All right. Do you guys want some food now? Everybody else wants some Goldie Bites? Goldie Bites available on lukesgoldies.com. We got plenty of them in stock. But yeah, this is mainly what I'm feeding them. And you'll notice how like their growth has exploded. Is that because of the Goldie Bites? No. I was feeding them the Goldie Bites before. And in all honesty, something, something I've learned about, about goldfish over the years is that yes, food quality matters, but it matters far, far less than water quality, all right? Food, food quality is good, like you wanna get some good high protein, some good fish meal, um, but in all honesty, you can grow a goldfish off of crap. <laughs> you can grow goldfish off of algae and sludge and everything and they'll be, they'll be decently healthy as long as the water quality is good. Um, now, of course, you wanna grow your goldfish fast, you wanna get high protein. Um, but I feel like people focus on the food too much. They're like, get this food, your goldfish will become mega chunky. People like Luke's Goldie say that. Um, <laughs> but food is important, but like even more so, if you really wanna grow a big goldfish, you gotta have good water quality. But anyway, hope this video uh, helped you understand how I'm using Salvinia in this system for my benefit. It's just a, an amazing nitrate absorber and I will begin selling it, I promise. I'm not just gonna keep feeding it to my chickens. Just gotta figure out economical way how. Gotta find the correct dimension box. Gotta put it in there, gotta do some test runs where I just put it in my garage and leave it there and see if it's still alive a couple days later um, in that package. And once I you know, pass those tests and I feel comfortable to ship it to customers, 
Yeah, I'll start selling Salvino. 